In many ways, Kaladin Stormblast is the heart of the Stormlight Archive. Ever since I read The Way of Kings, I identified most with Kaladin, and throughout reading the series, I followed his story the closest, as I'm the most invested in his struggle and what his future may hold. As I've become a super fan and I've covered Stormlight on this channel, and I've begun my reread of The Way of Kings on the Lost in Roshar podcast, a certain line stood out to me, and the more research I've done in this line, the more questions show up, and the more answers I crave to find out what will happen to Kaladin in Book 5 and beyond. Why is it that Kaladin is referred to as the child or son of Tanavast? In this video, I'd like to research a few possible reasons for this, and potentially answer some of those questions that have been interrupting my daily life for far too long now. This series can really take a hold of you, and making theories on the future of it are just too much fun. So join me on a fun exploration of Kaladin and his future in the rest of the Stormlight Archive. To examine the future of Kaladin, we first need to examine the beginnings of the Cosmere. It all began with Adonalsium. Whether Adonalsium was a force, a being, or simply pure investiture, we don't know. But this is where the vast majority of magic and creation in the Cosmere as we know it originated. After the shattering, Adonalsium was splintered into 16 shards, three of whom traveled to the Rosharian system. Honor, cultivation, and odium would be known as gods to the singers and humans alike during their time. The relations weren't without severe conflict. Honor and cultivation, held by Tanavast and Coravellium respectively, cared deeply for each other, and it can be implied that the two were romantically involved. This duo would soon be intercepted as an alien race. Humans fled their home planet of Ashen to seek refuge on Roshar, bringing with them a shard capable of terrible destruction, Odium. Now, with three shards presiding over the planet, tensions grew, and through a series of hazy and loosely accounted events, Honor was splintered and Tanavast killed. His cognitive shadow now lives on within the Stormfather, creating a confusing bond of memory and spren. It is here where we can now connect the significance of the Stormfather repeatedly calling Kaladin the son or child of Tanavast. The man himself has confirmed its significance, so it's up to us to get theorizing. Let's begin. Kaladin is referred to as the child or son of Tanavast a total of four times in the series thus far. These moments are spread equally with exactly one mention per main Stormlight book. The Way of Kings chapter 46, Child of Tanavast, Words of Radiance chapter 74, Striding the Storm, Oathbringer chapter 31, Demands of the Storm, and Rhythm of War chapter 107, Uniting. The first three quotes are within direct interactions between Kaladin and the Stormfather, with Rhythm of War being an exception where the Stormfather refers to Kaladin as the son of Tanavast in conversation with Dalinar. Now I've poured over these quotes many many a time, I've looked at the chapter numbers, I've tried to find secrets within the chapters, any sort of connection that I can make to see if Sandos try to pull a sneaky on us and hide some extra information that we're not quite gathering here but so far I can't put together any convincing leads. I've put all the quotes in this video so you can pause at your leisure and pull up the chapters because I'd love to hear where these quotes take you as well. For now, I'd like to take a broader look at our favorite Bridgman Kaladin. There are many Windrunners on Roshar now, but Kaladin has a few key differences. The one that sticks out the most perhaps is Syl. Syl is not your average Honospren, in fact, she is, as far as we know, the oldest living Honor Spren on Roshar. 
being known as the Ancient Daughter, Syl was created directly by the Stormfather himself, before being influenced by Tanavast's cognitive shadow. She was previously bonded to a Radiant, Relador, who died before the Recreants, leaving her as an extremely rare Spren who could potentially have memories predating this devastating event. Now, being known as the Ancient Daughter is not a passing factor in our theorizing here. I believe this could be one key piece of the puzzle as to why the Stormfather refers to Kaladin as the son of Tanavast. Could it be as simple as due to his bond with Syl, he's the closest Radiant in current day to Honor or Tanavast? It begs the question, was there another son of Tanavast predating Kaladin? It's almost impossible to say without being pure speculation that Kaladin's unique bond with Syl will surely connect some of the dots for us down the line. Sanderson has stated on many occasions that Kaladin's story isn't the Chosen One trope. It is doubtful that we will encounter any secret family lineage that will tie this whole mystery together. Though Kaladin's grandparents are mentioned in an extremely vague fashion, it's most likely a dead end. Regardless, even with this information, Kaladin has his fair share of head-scratching moments that make the reader feel like he is special or at least destined for greatness. Within my reread of The Way of Kings, there are countless lines written with a certain majesty and reverence regarding Kaladin and his spear. You were not shocked when a child knew how to breathe. You were not shocked when a sky eel took flight for the first time. You should not be shocked when you hand Kaladin Stormblaster's spear and he knows how to use it. Or perhaps even more strangely, when after performing his Kazar in front of Bridge 4, Kaladin apologizes to his spear. This predates any knowledge of Spren becoming blades or weapons to Radiance. Lastly, I believe it is worth mentioning that in Oathbringer chapter 31, the very chapter when the Stormfather calls him the child of Tanavast, Kaladin is able to literally deflect the storm, an action that is yet to be seen again and one that even shocks Syl. The final question to ask is, how could this happen in the next book, Wind and Truth? We know that this book will be the end of the first era of the Stormlight Archive, and from what we can gather so far, Rosha has never been in more danger. The role of shards are taken up for grabs, and Taravangian has set the stage for a contest of champions that is sure to shape the fate of the planet at large. But will it result in the reforging of honour? Is this truly Kaladin's destiny to become a god and watch over all our beloved characters in the next five books of Stormlight? If Kaladin were to be the vessel of honour, how would that change Roshar at large? What would it mean for his bond with Syl? Would it lead to the amalgamation of all the honor spread on the planet, creating a bittersweet goodbye to the ancient daughter Syl? We know that all of Kaladin's four radiant ideals have been foreshadowed in the death rattles accounted for in the epigraphs of the Way of Kings. I suspect there are a few possible candidates that could suffice for an event of Kaladin taking up honor. So the night will reign, for the choice of honor is life. He must pick it up, the fallen title, the tower, the crown, and the spear. The death is my life, the strength becomes my weakness, the journey has ended. Worryingly, I suspect that the last death rattle may have the largest chance of being Kaladin, as his remaining four ideals were all recounted from a first-person perspective. Is this Kaladin somehow sending personal accounts of his life back in time through death rattles? Or is it more likely that the Bondsmith, Dalinar Colon, will be the one to unite the splinters of honor and end his arc as the man who not only reforged himself,
for the Shard of Roshar itself? Perhaps we will answer these questions another time. For now, I want to hear from you, the viewer. How do you think Kaladin's destiny will manifest? I hope this video laid out enough questions to get you curious, and with further research, we may get one step closer to unravelling Sanderson's masterpiece.